Hello there and welcome back to our second video of the HTTP Security Headers mini-series. Um, in this video we'll be looking at the HTTP Strict Transport Security Header. So this is a must for your application. Uh, pretty much all applications should be using HTTPS by now and the Strict Transport Security Header is going to reinforce that so the browser should only be using HTTPS to connect to your site. So getting straight into it, what is the Strict Transport Security Header? So this header can be added to each server response and it will instruct the browser uh, that for all future requests to the application's domain, it should only be using HTTPS. So where a user types the URL of the site into a browser, which triggers a standard HTTP request, the browser will know to drop that HTTP request and instead send the request over HTTPS. And if we look at the bottom here, we have a few directives that can be used with the HSDS header. And directives in this case are keywords that can be used uh, or set to configure how headers behave. So we firstly have the max age uh, directive, and this is the length of time in seconds that the browser should continue upgrading HTTP requests to HTTPS requests for a particular site. Once this runs out, the browser will stop upgrading those requests. And you can see at the top of the screen, we have an example uh, HSTS header with the max age set to 31 million uh, seconds, which translates to a year. And this is the typical length of time you'll see used with this directive. Uh, secondly, we have uh, as a directive, we have the include subdomains directive. And it's important to note that for browsers, um, they will be storing uh, the domain which sent the HSTS header and will upgrade um, requests for that domain, but won't automatically upgrade the request of the subdomains. So if you have subdomains, um, you also want the browser to enforce HTTPS for, um, you should include this directive. And lastly, uh, we have the preload directive, and this directive is specified where you have submitted your domain to be put on Google's HSTS preload service. Um, so when a user initially visits an application, they will be provided with the HSTS response header if enabled by the server. However, because the first request is still initiated over HTTP, uh, which the server then upgrades manually to HTTPS, um, because of this, there's no protection for that initial request. With the preload service, your domain will be submitted um, and browsers will check the preload list before making uh, a request to the site to see if the request needs to be automatically sent via HTTPS. Therefore, no requests at all are sent over HTTP, not even the first request. And the reason the preload directive is specified in, uh, in the header is because it's required in order for you to submit a domain to the preload service. So the preload directive is definitely worth looking into for ensuring that even the first uh, the request to the uh, server is also protected um, with HTTPS via the uh, strict transport security header. So what particular problems does this header solve? Well, the HSTS header can be implemented to mitigate a number of man-in-the-middle attacks, uh, particularly those that rely on receiving a request over HTTP. So if we look at a normal web request um, like the one below, uh, a user types in the URL of uh, site A, um, a request will initially be sent over HTTP to the server, and from there the server then tells the browser to re-request the same page over HTTPS. So that's um, a typical request. What if we look at a scenario where uh, an attacker has managed to intercept a user's HTTP traffic? The attack will be able to intercept the user's initial HTTP request and redirect the request to a malicious server, which could be, uh, say, copycatting the site that the user is trying to reach. Uh, they can then return the response to a user and have them fill out potentially sensitive data in something like a login form. So in this case, the user credentials could be compromised. However, when a user visits a website that uses the HSTS header, and they've either visited the site before or the site is on the preload list um, set up by Google, their initial request will be sent over HTTPS. So if uh, an attacker sends uh, net network traffic to the malicious server now, the TLS handshake will um, initiate with the malicious server, but it will fail because the certificate does not match the valid site. So the user will be alerted and no data will be potentially will potentially be exposed. So this is a sort of scenario where the HSTS header um, comes into play. 
And just a quick note that the HSTS header is supported by all major browsers and therefore the header will pretty much work for all users. Um, so the HSTS header is a no-brainer. Add it to your site if it's not already there as it's going to add additional protection to the client server communications. So that's it for the HSTS header. Please remember to like and subscribe if you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next video when we'll be looking at the X-Frame options header.